Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to talk about system requirements for running KTR and I would also demonstrate the installation. So let's get started. Now let me first talk about system requirements. If you haven't purchased a computer yet, if you don't have a machine yet, I'd suggest that you go with a workstation even if you have to go with a refurbished workstation since workstations are expensive. I would recommend a workstation over a laptop even if both are having the same processor. Even if you have a generation old workstation, I think it would work better than a laptop which is say of the latest generation uh, due to the simple reason that workstations generally they run cooler, they perform better. So this is my recommendation and I would suggest you go with a workstation rather than a laptop. Uh, plus workstations can actually work for extended periods of time. Uh, they won't restart as much uh, and I think they won't restart at all if you compare it with a laptop. Coming to the display size, I'd suggest you go with a larger screen as larger as it can be. Anything over 17 or 18 inches is better. Even if it is a small screen, you would be able to use it and you would be able to create designs, you would be able to mod create models. But if you have a larger screen, uh, you'd be able to better manage larger assemblies. For learning purpose, even a 17 inch screen would be okay. But if say you're working on larger assemblies, uh, a screen of 19 inches is more suited since you can use it as a split screen. KTI has a function where you can basically split the screen and work on two files or uh, three files at once. Coming to the mouse, I'd suggest you go with the three button mouse. Navigating the model manipulation is actually easier with a three button mouse. There is a workaround for this if you don't have a three button mouse, but it would be relatively slow. So I'd suggest you go with the three button mouse. The workaround is basically that you have a transformation pad. You can come with a virtual sort of transformation pad on the screen when you are working on KTA and using that transformation pad using a simple mouse you can rotate, zoom in or pan the model. But it is relatively slow as I mentioned earlier. So a three button mouse is recommended. Now coming to the installation. Let me first demonstrate the installation on Windows. Then perhaps I would also demonstrate the installation on Ubuntu. That's the Linux flavor that I have. First, as you can see that here is a folder that has the KTO software. Let me just open that. Now here you can see that there are basically three setup folders and each of them have a separate setup file that I need to run sequentially. So I'll start with the first one. So here you can see that the installation has started and it's giving me a warning and I'll ignore it and click next. It's showing me the location where the KTI installation will take place. If you want to change this location, you can change it using the browse button. But I don't want to change it. I want to install in the default location where it's installing. Now it's asking you, uh, since the directory is not there, do you want to create it? You can click yes. Now it's showing me the location where the KTI environment will be installed. Uh, since I don't want to change the default location, I'll click next. If you want to change the location, you can change it using the browse button. I want to do a complete installation, so I'll select the complete as an option and proceed and I'll click next. There's no need changing these variables, so I'll click on next. There's no need to change this as well. Simply click next. I don't want to do an OVR wall client setup, so I'll ignore this and click next. I want to have a desktop icon and I also want other options, so I'll keep them selected as well and click next. Since I don't have the online documentation, I'll simply proceed to next and keep this as deselected. 
Now here it is showing all the workbenches that will be installed. Now at the bottom you can see how much is the available space and how much space the installation will take. While it is getting installed it will show you the different features that the software has. Let me just fast forward this. Now here you can see that the first setup is complete and it is asking me for the second CD. Since I don't have a CD, I'll simply close this process by using the task manager. By using control alt delete, I'll open the task manager and I'll close the entire process tree. After it is closed, I'll run the second setup. Since the first setup created all the required directories, I won't make any changes and simply click next for all the options that are presented. Let me just fast forward this setup installation as well. Now it is asking me to insert the third CD. Since I don't have a CD, I'll close this process as well using the task manager. I've closed the entire process tree. Now I'll run the final setup in the similar way as I did the second one. Now here the installation is complete. I don't want to launch KTS so I'll deselect this option and click OK. Now. The setup also has the crack folder. I'll copy this file that you see here and paste it in the location where Katia was installed. I'll use the option copy and replace since I want to replace the original file that's there with the file that's there in the crack folder. After this is done, you can run KTA using the desktop icon. To install KTA on Ubuntu or any other Linux flavor, you would need to create a virtual windows installation. And to do that, you'll need to install Vine and play on Linux. Unfortunately, the screen recording software on my Ubuntu installation is not working properly, so I can't show you the installation. But the instructions for installation can be found on my blog. You can use these instructions to do the installation. If you face any issues, just let me know in the comment section, I'll reply. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I will tell you how to open KTR, what are the different ways in which you can open KTR. I will also discuss the graphical user interface, the different file types and compatibility. I will also let you know how to use the mouse. If you haven't given a like to the video, please give it a like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.